Coming up next, Azari proves that she is the real deal. While Pony's Day in Chicago was a classic, it was a good day to win two for Mike Smith and John Velasquez. While Rocka Gibraltar just wanted to win one. The aftermath from Arlington next along John Silver's Wire to Wire. Long John Silver's Wire to Wire, presented by Sitco. It was a weekend so big that Randy Moss actually left his voice in Chicago. <laughs> I'm not even sure he had it there, to be honest with you. The Breeders' Cup, World Thoroughbred Championships, the Classic, the $4 million Classic, War Emblem, Medaglia d'Oro, came home. Valponi? <laughs> Valponi. Yeah. Wasn't even on the radar screen for a lot of people leading up to the Breeders' Cup Classic. And all those horses you mentioned, I mean, War Emblem, empty. Medaglia to Oro, got to the top of the stretch, striking position, empty. Came home, backed up on the turn. Hawkwing, nothing. Evening attire, nothing. Meanwhile, Valponi ran the race of his life. Let's go back to Saturday, the last race, the Classic. Here's Tom Durkin. And they're off. War Emblem away well, but E. Dubai got the jump on him, firing right off the mark. Came home on the outside, and Medallion Oro comes on through. E. Dubai is the leader as they race for the first turn. On the outside, Medallia Doro, and War Emblem is in between horses. He's running second now, and he'll go on to challenge E. Dubai into the clubhouse turn. Perfect trip, takes to the inside in fourth. Valponi rides the rails in fifth, came home is hustled up on the outside from six now mike smith wants to get him closer he's six lengths from front running e dubai macho uno is now running in mid pack and he's seven Harlan's holiday is eighth milwaukee brew is ninth hawkwing is unhurried a bit wide going into the back stretch four lengths back to the stretch runner evening attire and the last of them all is dollar bill and he is 12 lengths from the front runners and they're moving right along here a testing opening half mile by e dubai in 46 and three fifth seconds and war emblem is chasing him in earnest he's under a hustling ride there by espinoza and perfect drift is just coasting along in third medallia d'oro fourth with five furlongs to go here for the inside bob pony bottled up in fifth and that it's Harlan's holiday, sixth as they approach the far turn. Macho Uno is moving up methodically on the inside and came home, is coming up empty. Hawkwing is now beginning to circle horses on the far outside. Hawkwing's in here. So too is Milwaukee Brew, arounding the far turn. And the Derby winner's in front. War Emblem has taken over, but Medallia Doro is right there in his throat latch. And Valcone comes charging on through as the field turns for home. Valcone on the inside is taken over. The leader at the top of the stretch is leaving Medallia Barrow behind in second. And War Emblem is spent. And farther back, it is Milwaukee Brew who's now third, followed by Macho Uno fourth. They're coming down to the finish, and it's going to be a huge upset. 40 to 1 on the wire. Valpone scores in the classic. He wins by a half a dozen lengths. Sent off at 43 to 1. Valpone wins by six and a half under Jose Santos. What a day for 77-year-old Hall of Fame trainer Phil Johnson. Final race of the career for War Emblem and came home. Obviously, Mr. Johnson did a lot of things right, and the uh, the thing that he's going to be most remembered for, I think, is the decision to run Valpone in the Classic in the first place. He was also pre-entered in the Breeders' Cup Mile as a second preference, and going into the Breeders' Cup week, most people thought he would wind up running in the Mile. But Johnson pulled a switch, said we'll try him in the Classic instead. Of course, more money. Now at the start. You saw uh, E. Dubai on the inside go to the lead, War Emblem chasing. Even though the fractions of this race were not as fast as War Emblem's Preakness, Victor Espinosa has to basically hustle War Emblem just to stay within a length of E. Dubai. And even though War Emblem went past him at the, at the top of the stretch, it was clear that this was not going to be War Emblem's day. Came home backed up badly. Meanwhile, Valpone goes past Medaglia to Oro at the top of the lane like he was standing still. A ground-saving ride from Santos. Medallia to Oro coming into this race off a two-month layoff. Maybe Bobby Frankel, as well as Bob Baffert, might be second-guessing their decisions to have such inactivity leading into this race. Meanwhile, some confidence expressed by a horse, Phil G. Johnson, after Valpone's victory. Well, he was just getting so good, and we were sitting at home, and I was talking to my wife. We kid around a lot, and she hollered at me for something. I said, Saturday, you're going to be at the 316th pole very proud of me. And then she told the girls that, and they asked me. I said, I do believe he can win a race like that if he gets a good trip. And I didn't know how he'd run in mud, and it dried up. We talked it over, and I said, you've never ridden him with blinkers on, and he'll be more aggressive. There's a world of speed in here, and they can't, those three-year-olds can't go, Mom. 
mile and a quarter, a mile and a quarter. I didn't think off the layup. So I said, sit close, and when you're ready to go, just go. You know, even though he runs second, thirds, you know, he went to the grass, runs second, he w went back to the door, he runs second in the um, Maryland Cup, and uh, now he show up in the Classic and he went big. I mean, he, he should have a little bit of consideration because he, he's a great horse. He, he deserved to be uh, one of the top. Even though Phil sounded like Vito Corleone, he's really a sweet guy. <laughs> Made up an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> ESPN.com. It was the final weekend for the Pick 6 Challenge presented by Digiturf.com, and we had a winner. Congratulations to Jack Hayes. Expect more fun to come from our website at ESPN.com, where you just click on horse racing. So to come, as Ari was smoking in the distaff, and we'll also go racing down under with the Cox Plate. And in final furlongs, two High Chaparral mows the lawn in the John Deere turf. ESPN gives you more of what you want from a sports channel. More variety, more championships, world-class coverage, world-class stars, the best sports, the biggest names, original programs, premier events, one-of-a-kind special, 360 degrees of sports, 365 days a year. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN goes spanning the globe this November to bring you the world of sports. The NBA on ESPN kicks into high gear with basket-to-basket -basket coverage like never before. The top clubs in Europe meet in the UEFA Champions League with match days 5, 6, and 7. The finest golfers in the world hit the links with PGA Tournament play all month long. The hard-hitting action of American football continues their ferocious play with two games each week. The great action from the pitches of Holland continue with Dutch football. The NHL on ESPN will thrill you with the high speed and fast action of the National Hockey League. The Tennis Masters Series will crown a champion in Shanghai in the Tennis Masters Cup. The rough and tumble play of the Scottish Premier League rolls on. Great action this November on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The NFL on ESPN. The hard-hitting action of American football is rocking and rolling as we head into midseason. Are the Jaguars cats of prey or will the Giants tame them into little pussycats? Both teams are desperate for victory. Jaguars-Giants, live Monday. It's a battle of division leaders when the mighty Green Bay Packers face the Miami Dolphins. Can the pack harpoon the fish, or is it the season of the Dolphins? Dolphins, Packers, live Tuesday. The NFL on ESPN. This ESPN2 presentation of Long John Silver's Wire to Wire is brought to you by Long John Silver's. This is seafood country. Sitco, we know you. The American Quarter Horse Association. Let freedom ride. The race I wanted to see on Saturday was the first one, the distaff, but Azari took all of the drama out of that one pretty early. Right as soon as they left the gate. She's obviously a phenomenal racehorse, yet she was only a lukewarm favorite in the distaff. A lot of handicappers expected to see an early speed duel, myself included, between Azari and Imperial Gesture. But leaving the gate, Azari just toyed with Imperial Gesture. Out ran her to the lead, very fast fraction, still had plenty left, and that was the game plan from trainer Laura Desaru. We were very confident, and the path leading up to this race has been handicapped, so Mike has never really let her run because we, you know, we knew we were going to pick up weight all year, and the ultimate goal is the Breeders' Cup. So he was really looking forward to letting her roll today and see what it really felt like. She has won all of her races in the same style that you saw today, and it is very, very rare for a filly to um, end the year with uh, only one second and all, you know, what, 10 wins out of 11 starts is uh, very, very rare. And it's, it's only a true champion that can amass a, a record like that. After Volpone's upset in the Classic, the once beaten Azari becomes the leading horse of the year candidate. Agreeing with that assessment, a guy that didn't even have a horse in the distaff, trainer Dwayne Lucas. I agree with Laura in a lot of ways. The horse of the year uh, has to have a, a certain amount of charisma. And um, I think that uh, when you get to these championship events, it, the one that captures the day is the one that usually will come out on top. And uh, her filly certainly did that. There are some other horses that have done that. You guys out there don't have an easy job. I'm glad I don't have a vote. 
the most courageous effort of the afternoon. A half hour later in the Long John Silver's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, the even money favorite Storm Flag Flying came back again to defeat Composure, her trainer, Shook McGahey. You know, she made, when she made the lead over Santa Katrina, then uh, she just, you know, she tried to pull herself up a little bit. Um, you know, and then when that filly ran by her, you know, then that kind of gave her the inspiration to keep going, and I thought, to uh, come back running. I thought she, you know, I thought at the end she was a pretty handy winner. If she throws, um, you know, a new trick on us or something, it might have been something I've seen before through her, through her grandmother or mother. So, you know, I think it helps. Some. It makes it more exciting. <laughs> The family tree includes three Breeders' Cup winners, grandmother Personal Ensign, her mother My Flag, now Storm Flag Flying, all trained by Shug McGahey. Next up the mile, check it out. The heavy favorite, Rock of Gibraltar, last leaving the starting gate. He's a come from behind her, but they didn't want to be that far behind. And as they turn for home with the unfortunate incident involving Lanseer, keep an eye on the orange silks in the back. Rock of Gibraltar has to avoid Lanseer, still far back. Meanwhile, Dome Driver sprints to the lead. Driver slicing his way through between horses, and here comes the rock, and the rock is rolling late. They're coming down to the finish. Dome Driver, yes. Dome Driver over Rock of Gibraltar. Meanwhile, there is the owner, Maria Niarcos Guasse. She didn't get to see the race live. Yes, even a billionaire can get stuck in the elevator and miss the race. Meanwhile, a great ride from jockey Terry Tulo. Like, I, I think today the winner is the best. <laughs> hey. Short and sweet. At least on that day, he was the best. Rock of Gibraltar in his final career start. The Napa Breeders' Cup Sprint Orientate comes from just off the pace. Well, we only had one shot today. I usually are in a couple of these races, but today we just had the one and we had to make the most of it. But uh, we felt good about him. He's trained well up to it, and, uh, you know, they're very difficult to win. But, um, you know, it's always best. I think you have, your odds are increased if you have the best horse. We didn't look beyond this, but we did have a little bit of discussion, and, and Bob and Beverly and I will get our heads together. I would say that if we were to come uh, back in another race, we'd probably look more seriously at the Cigar Mile. Orientate ran down a huge long shot Thunderello. He had never before settled that far off the pace and won it. Wayne Lucas, the all-time leading Breeders' Cup trainer, Jerry Bailey, became the all-time leading jockey. Well, the racing world didn't come to a complete standstill this weekend. They were racing in Australia, the Cox Plate. Chris Lincoln was there front and center. Well, halfway around the world, about 15 hours before the Breeders' Cup ran their races, Australia ran its greatest wait for age race. The W.S. Cox Plate, sponsored by Carlton Draft. It was a race that featured three superstars. Northley, defending champion of the Cox Plate, who just won the Caulfield Cup the Saturday before. Sunline, making her last appearance, the seven-year-old champion New Zealand race mare, who had won this race twice before herself. And the invader from Godolphin, Bandera, rated the top 2,000-meter horse in the world, the highest international-rated horse ever to come to Australia. They were the three stars in a field of nine. Let's pick up the call from David Raphael. Sunlight Corn is at the bend. She's at half length in front of Northerly. Defiers coming on. Grandira switching out now. Flashes the tail. Lonro can't come on. It's Sunline. Northerly's laying it down. Grandira's coming to the outside. He's getting wound up with Defiar. Northerly kick. Sprinted. Once he's second. Cox Plate. Grandira's flashing with Defiar. Northerly. Patty Payne wins the Cox Plate three quarters. Northerly wins the Colton Draft Cox Plate for the second straight year as the second-year-old Gelding wins his 17th start in 27 races and pushes his career earnings over $4.2 million. One length back in second, the five-year-old Defire, with the Dolphins' Grandera under Frankie DeTore, another neck back in third. The great New Zealand race mare Sunline, a two-time Cox Plate winner, finished fourth another length back in her final career start, retiring with earnings of over $6.2 million. Northerly is part owned and trained by Fred Kersley. Northerly, of course, you don't need me to tell you, he's a great horse. And with his win today, he's equal to Sunline in Cox Plate status in any case. From the Mooney Valley race course outside Melbourne, Australia, our coverage of the WS Cox Plate, I'm Chris Lincoln for Wire to Wire. Coming up, it's preview time, starting with the Cal Cup and our NTRA Great Stakes. 
and speed, we look ahead to this weekend's MBNA America Challenge Championship. Welcome back to Long John Silver's Wire to Wire. Big weekend for jockey Russell Bays as he reaches the 8,000 win milestone. It happened Saturday at Bay Meadows in the eighth race. What elite company he is in as he joins Lafitte Pinkai, The Shoe, and Pat Day. One of the highlights of this weekend will be the Cal Cup at the Oak Tree Meeting at Santa Anita. Ten races, and it includes a $1 million guaranteed pick six. The Cal Cup, of course, for California breads, and among the horses we are scheduled to see in the Cal Cup Classic is the White Horse. Gray Horse, actually. Gray Memo on the outside. There he is, defeating Euchre and Congaree earlier this year at Del Mar in the San Diego. He came back to lose the Pacific Classic in the Goodwood after this, but he'll be one of the favorites against Continental Red and others in this field. Sixth in the Cal Cup Classic each of the last two years, hoping to better that performance, obviously. Then in the Cal Cup Juvenile, the horse in front you see there winning the Del Mar Futurity, Ice Cold Beer at Reds. He defeated some good competition in that race, including Calf Wayne and Bull Market. Didn't run very well in the Champagne, but he should be on the engine, leaving the gate in the Cal Cup Juvenile for trainer Bob Baffert. Ten races are worth more than $1.3 million, and the classic, the richest of those, a quarter million dollars there. And in the California Cup, this staff, we will get to see a comeback. Yes, Hall of Fame jockey Julie Crone, who had uh, been, who has been in retirement, will unretire, scheduled to come back in the distaff. And as you can see, the Cal Cup and a lot of these state-bred uh, big days are patterned sort of loosely after the Breeders' Cup. You got the juvenile, juvenile fillies, and also a sprint. And don't forget about that one million dollar pick six. It is guaranteed. Races five through ten. In the wake of the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships, the MBNA America Challenge Championships now step to center stage. Huge night of racing in American Quarter Horse Racing. Six races worth $825,000. We will start with the journeyman. The Professional's Choice Challenge is for horses that have started for a claiming price of $7,500 or less in the 12 months prior to the entry deadline for the trial. One horse of note is Streakin' to Romance who not only won the Professional's Choice Oklahoma Challenge back in May to earn a spot in the Professional's Choice Final, but in July almost made the NBNA America Challenge Finals. If it wasn't for Streak and Sintacha, he would have been racing with the big boys, but he finished second in the NBNA America Texas Challenge and had to settle for the possibility of winning the AQHA's biggest claiming prize. Here are the probable starters for Saturday. This year's Professional's Choice Challenge Championship is worth $50,000. The distance is 350 yards. This is the only challenge final that is not a graded stake. Ford Challenge Championship is just for fillies and mares. One of the first mares to make the final was Belisa, who scored a win in the Oklahoma Ford Challenge. Bolisa, Bolisa now has the lead. Lady Tanaya has made it into second. Bolisa is driving on. It's Lady Tanaya and Bolisa, and Bolisa wins the Ford Challenge. They also ran Belisa back in the Ford Central Challenge last month. Talk about a momentum killer. She finished fourth. Here are the probable starters for Saturday night's finale. This division is for fillies and mares. The distance, 400 yards. A total purse of $75,000. There's a past winning owner in the mix. Ravage won the Mexico Ford Challenge in Mexico City. She's owned by Ramiro Lopez, who campaigned the AQHA's all-time leading stakes winner, Cool Q Baby. Now to the MCI Challenge Championship, Rock and Strawfly. Since Shockwave through the 870 crowd in March, when he not only won the MCI New Mexico Challenge, he set a world record in the process. On the inside, sign of Letty has its work cut out now. Rock and Strawfly's been in front the whole way. And down to the 16th pole, two and a half clear. Sign of Letty with a belated effort on the inside. Now to the outer, but it's going to be Rock and Strawfly by a length and a half. And Rock and Strawfly first. The MCI Challenge Championship is a grade one worth $75,000. When the series debuted in 93, this turned out to be the only grade one final. And this race is very important when it comes to postseason honors for the distance horses. And now to the two-year-old in the American Airlines Challenge Championship. One Corona for me has enjoyed the terrible two. The son of Corona Cartel has been knocking around in stakes company all year long. He was ninth in the Lazy E Futurity, sixth in the Heritage Place Futurity, and fifth in the Rainbow Futurity. His lone stakes triumph was the American Airlines West Southwest Challenge at Yavapai Downs in early September. The Bear Legend Million Dollar Bonus starts with the American Airlines Challenge Championship. The horse has to win the American Airlines at two, the Bear Legend at three, and the NBA Challenge Championship, and do it all in a three-year span. Two divisions to go in the Bayer Legend Challenge. Look for Rulon Gardner to put the competition in a headlock. The Bayer Legend is a 400-yard test for three-year-olds. This year, the total prize money is $175,000.
And finally, the MBNA America Challenge Championship. Representing California is Chiara Scurro. The son of Chicks Beduino has been seasoned at Los Al. This year alone, he's been third in the Spencer Childers, third in the Los Al Winter Championship, and second in the Vessels Maturity. His biggest take score of the year, the MBNA America California Challenge. But on paper, the vintage of the day looks to be Kendall Jackson. Kendall Jackson in front with Dash for a fortune in the extreme outside. One's come down, and it's he's by Dasher in behind who fell. But Kendall Jackson streaking right away. Wins it so well. History in the making as Kendall Jackson establishes a new world record at 440 yards. This is the richest race of the six for $300,000. The only question mark is world champion Taylor Fitt. Owner Betty Jane Berlin will make a last-minute decision on his participation. For more information on American Quota Horse Racing, call 1-800-414-RIDE. Coming up, Randy puts the wraps on this year's World Thoroughbred Championship. Frankel was dominant in the Philly and Mare Turf. Baffert pulls a sweep in the Bessemer Trust Juvenile. And the Euro Charge wins in the John Deere Turf. This ESPN2 presentation of Long John Silver's Wire to Wire is brought to you by Long John Silver's. This is seafood country. Sitgo, we know you. NTRA.com. For all your World Thoroughbred Championships merchandise and collectibles, go to the online store at NTRA.com. Equibase.com, your official online source for racing information, from entries to results and everything in between. Equibase.com is a service of Equibase Company, the thoroughbred industry's official database. A couple of reminders, starting with NTRA today at the races, same day coverage of the Iroquois, and plus the Cal Cup and the NBA America Challenge Championship. That is a big show. Next week on Long John Silver's Wire to Wire for the Saturday morning crowd that likes to get up early, you can catch us on ESPN, 5.30 a.m. Eastern. For more, head to ESPN.com. Click on horse racing. In the Philly and Mare turf, Banks Hill and Golden Apples got a lot of the pre-race pub, but for them it didn't happen. Bobby Frankel won the race, but instead of winning it with Banks Hill, the defending champion, won it with Starine, a filly that he not only trains, but owns. And as we did with the earlier Breeders' Cup races, since most of you have seen these races already, we're going to focus primarily on post-race comments, and here's what Frankel had to say. The thing that the difference between the, these two is that uh, Starine is an absolute freaking soft dog. When she ran in the Matriarch uh, last year, she killed Golden Apples. It wasn't even a race. And when I run her up at Saratoga in the Diana, it was soft and she, she made it look like a fast racetrack. So that was the edge I had. It's, it's a bittersweet win, too, because, you know, I, I, my, my best client I just beat. So, you know, I, I might not have a job tomorrow. <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, if, if you want to be honest with you, if I'd have finished second and she beat me, I'd, I'd have been really happy, you know, honest to God. The Eclipse Award in the Philly and Mare Turf Division could come down to the December 1st Matriarch at Hollywood Park, where Starine, Golden Apple, and perhaps Banks Hill all scheduled to meet. Next up, the Bessemer Trust Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Vindication stayed unbeaten with an impressive win. Vindication, second place Calf Lane, fourth place Bull Mark, and all trained by Bob Baffert. No, I thought we were really high on this colt. All my horses trained... Uh... Uh, great coming in this race. Uh, my two-year-old's Kafwain, he ran a great race. He just keeps, he's a tough horse, keeps running. Uh, bull market, he got a little tired, but uh, Vindication, I think, you know, he showed us, he, when he broke his maiden, he, he, he wowed us in his maiden race, and um, when I took him to Turfway Park, you know, he, he broke horrible, he was way back, uh, ate all this sand, and came around, and he swooped around there, he made that Arazi move, and really, gave me goosebumps, uh, you know, same kind of move that Point Given uh, did when he, when he ran there. What's wrong with him for Horse of the Year? And salvaging what would have been an otherwise disastrous Breeders' Cup afternoon for the Irish lads from Coolmore, this scintillating stretch run by High Chaparral and the John Deere Breeders' Cup turf. Here's trainer Aiden O'Brien. Uh, High Chaparral has always been a, a top-class, uh, wonderful horse. Um, like the only time he got beat this year was in the, in the arc when it was probably my fault for not giving him a, a day out when he, we weren't able to get a prep into him, and he was just mentally very relaxed. And again, we, we thought kind of three months ago that he wouldn't be even here, that he wouldn't race anymore. He was a horse was very sick in the middle of the summer, so um, I, like, I think it was a testimony to the horse, really, that he even turned up today, but we saw what he can do, and um, we, we, like, it showed today there'll be no problem when he drops back in trip. He showed plenty uh, quick and plenty, plenty pace off a slowly run race today, I thought. 
Arlington Park hasn't even cooled off. Well, I guess it is cool, probably. Yeah. Uh, but let's get your pick for Horse of the Year. Well, a lot of things had to happen for Azari to be the leading Horse of the Year candidate. War Emblem had to get beat. Came Home had to get beat. Medallia Oro, De Oro, Medallia Doro had to get beat. It all happened. Azari should be the Horse of the Year. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.